welcome back to my channel. I am Ashley and in today's video, I'm going to be talking to you guys about some tips on how to help new families feel secure. So this was actually a video request. I'm going to include the comment that was requesting this type of a video in the screen. And I wanted to talk to you guys about this because I feel like it is something that not a lot of people talk about. I feel like this will help a lot of providers. I know that when I first started out my in-home daycare, I was a little bit insecure about it because I was like, oh, Nobody's gonna wanna leave their kid in somebody else's house. I know that when I gave birth to Anthony, I didn't even think of in-home daycare. I thought facility, in-home daycare wasn't even an option. And um, having that in the back of my mind, I was like, nobody's gonna wanna enroll in an in-home daycare. But after doing what I do for so long, I started to realize that it's not as bad as a lot of people make it seem. So I'm going to be talking to you guys about how to help new families feel secure. And these are some things that are gonna be able to help you as a provider get new families into your program enrolled and feeling secure with choosing you as an in-home daycare provider. So the first thing that I have on my list is to offer the trial day. So not a lot of people in my area do this, but I offer a free trial day. So it is three hours, not a full day, as many of you guys might think, but it is three hours unpaid and it's either from 8 a.m. to 11 a.m or from 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. And it's just three hours, they can pick whatever day that they want, and it's just three hours for me to observe the child. So I ask that the parents do it between those times because that is when I do a lot of things, like fine motor, we do breakfast, we do lunch, and I like to have the student during that time, during the trial, because I wanna see if it's something that I'm able to handle at my most busiest time of the day. That's how I personally like to do it. I like to challenge myself a little bit because if I can't handle that specific child when I'm at my busiest, then I'm not gonna be able to handle the child at all, if that makes any sense. So. For the trial day, I ask them to drop off the diapers, the wipes, leave me their child as if they were going to be doing it as a normal day. You're gonna to wanna to ask for extra clothes as well because just in case there's an accident in those three hours, you wanna be prepared. So I like to do this because I like the parents to see how I am as a provider and I like to see how the child is in my program and how they get along with the other students. Not a lot of people might like to do it, but I know that parents really, really, really do like this and I feel like it attracts them to my program because again, not a lot of people do this and it gives them a little bit of a idea of who you are as a provider before fully committing into a contract and choosing you as a provider they get to kind of see how you are before so it helps you as well because you don't want to commit to accepting a child and then that child is something that is not suitable for your program so trial days i really do think are really good for getting parents to feel secure and then when their first day arrives they're not going to be too hesitant and too nervous because they already had a little bit of an experience with you if that makes any sense so the next thing that I have is to make sure that you come off as confident and professional. So this is a big one. I know that like if you guys were to go to a hair salon and you were gonna get a haircut and the stylist didn't look confident or didn't look like she knew what she was doing, you're not gonna want her to cut your hair because you want someone that looks like they know what they're doing and looks like they're confident and has a little bit of experience in what they're doing. So you're gonna wanna come off as professional and confident as you possibly can. You're gonna wanna have a really good tour. I have a couple of videos on how to give like a really good tour um, on my channel, I have, I think, three or four of them. I'll link them down below if you guys want to check them out. But you want to have a really good tour. You want to have answers to all of the questions that they might ask you. I also have a video on some questions that new families like to ask before enrolling. And I really do think that you need answers to questions. You don't want them to ask you a specific scenario or a specific question and you're like, uh, you know, you're caught off guard. So, so you want to get all of your ducks in a row. You want to do all of your research. You're going to want to have a really good handbook and you're going to want to know your handbook from front to back because a lot of the questions that they ask you, 90% of the answers are in the handbook. Like, oh, do you charge when you're closed? Oh, how many vacations do you take? Or what days are you closed? Like all of that is in my handbook. If you guys want to watch my video on my handbook, I'll have it linked above and down below for you guys as well. But a lot of the questions that they might ask you are already addressed in the handbook. So knowing your handbook, from front to back is really good. It'll help you prepare a lot better for when you get asked specific questions. And then again, you want your space to be nice, clean, organized, and look like it's for the kids and not dangerous. And you know what I'm trying to say? Like you're gonna wanna have the parents, again, feel secure with the area that you have for the children. The next thing that I have is to get to know the children before they start. So their habits and their routines and their attachments, all of those things you're gonna wanna know before they enroll. So I know that whenever I leave my kids with someone, I like to let them know like, hey, you know, he likes to drink water from this cup. This is an example because it's not true, but he likes to drink water from this cup or he doesn't like to drink his milk if it's not out of a bottle. Those are little things that you're gonna wanna know and you're gonna 
even want to ask the parents in advance because I know that parents sometimes they'll be at work and they'll be like, oh my God, I forgot to tell her that he doesn't like his milk in a cup. It needs to be in his body. You know what I'm saying? So you're going to want to ask the parents if they have any attachments, if they have any routines, if they need anything done a specific way so that you know those things as a provider. I like to ask the parents about everything in advance, if they have any attachments, if they like anything done a specific way, because I want the child to obviously adjust better and the parents are not going to feel too overwhelmed like oh she needs to make sure that she does this this way or does that that way you already know the information and that's why i think that you should ask those kind of questions before having the child enroll because parents are going to feel a lot more at ease when they're at work and they know okay ashley knows that he needs his milk in his bottle he doesn't like to eat this he's allergic to that like those are things that you need to know in advance and the parents Knowing that you know these things, it helps them feel a little bit more secure. So the next thing that I have is to send a few updates for the first few days. There are apps out there. I had Brightwheel and I used to use it, but to be completely honest, it took a lot of time from me out of my day to sit there and log everything for every child. So let's say every child had the same thing for lunch. Instead of being able to say all the children had mac and cheese and send a notification out to everybody, I had to select every child one by one and put mac and cheese, select mac and cheese, select mac and cheese, for example. And I didn't like doing that. It was took too much time. And I obviously have so many other things that I have to do as a provider that to sit there for those extra 10, 15 minutes to go ahead and log things, it's really, really, really time consuming. So I personally don't have any apps anymore. I do go over a lot of things during drop off. Not a lot, but like I always go over how they ate, how they napped and how their bathroom potty situation was. So if they had a bowel, I'll let them know. I like to go over those three things mainly at drop off because those are the most important things for the parents. So um, send a few updates. I like to do it for the first two, three weeks. After that, normally the parents are really confident with me and they feel comfortable with me and they're not constantly texting me. But sometimes like five months into the program, they'll be like, hey, can you send me a picture? I'll send them a picture. But it does take a lot of your time. So I try to tell the parents like, hey, I'll keep you updated for the first couple of weeks. Everything in advance because then they're gonna be like, oh, she just stopped sending me updates. So let them know in advance like, for the first couple of weeks, I'll send you a few updates so you can see how your child's doing and this is that and that, that this. And um, I just think that updates really do help them feel secure with your program as well. So then the last tip that I have is at pickup, go into detail for the first few days about how their day was if time allows. So if you have the time to go over more things than usual, I would go over more things than usual. So typical pickup, I would tell parents how the child ate, how they napped, and if they had any bowels or how their potty situation was for that day. I'll go over those three things with all of my parents. I let them know. And then for new students, I like to go into a little bit more detail. Like, oh, I noticed that she didn't like this or I noticed that they didn't like that. And the reason why I like to go into that is because the things that I tell these parents, they're going to start to realize like, oh, okay, she noticed that or oh, she caught that or you get what I'm saying? Like you want to have that communication. So I like to do that with new parents because it helps them feel a lot more confident with you as a provider. I still do that with my existing parents too. Like, oh, I noticed that I tried this with uh, Rebecca and she didn't like it. So I like to do that. But for the first few weeks and for the first few days, I like to really go into detail with how the child did with new parents. You might have to do it for like weeks and months. You might have to do it for like the first three days and then the parents are already used to you. But I like to take that extra step and talk to them a little bit more about how their child did throughout the day with me. So those are some things that I know normally do to help families feel secure with me and my program if you guys have any other tips leave them down below i'm always 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 open for suggestions and for tips and helpful things so you can go ahead and leave me a comment down below but i really do hope that this video was helpful and that completes today's video so thank you guys so much for watching please subscribe to my channel if you guys have not already and i will see you guys in my next video